Are you talking to yourself? She f found out how to suck her lips. That might be because she's teething. So sometimes her mouth disappears in her lips disappearing in her mouth. Are you kicking your legs? Are you being a cheeky monkey? Are you being a cheeky monkey? Let's see you. She's very aware of the camera. Very. That's the new generation babies. I like to torture her with kisses. This is a three months after this intense labor. I would say it was extremely intense. It was extremely spiritual. My postpartum recovery was very interesting. It was the most spiritual time of my life, most profound, most beautiful time. I wouldn't change it for anything. It was just gorgeous and beautiful. I feel like I grew as a person. I feel like my heart got cracked open. And I can laugh with such intensity now. So much more my partner, my mother, my father, my brother and everybody else. I feel that it was such an amazing experience. Yeah, you have all these stories from Mama. You're telling me what it was before you came to worry, huh? What was, what was there? What was in there? Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, you guys. Thanks for being with us. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Namaste everyone. Today I am finally doing my birth story. It's been highly requested. I know a lot of you are curious. And I had to first get to understand my deep feelings about birth because birth is probably the, the most incredible experience that I have had and second of all I've been trying to have enough time to record the birth story and I wanted to be in kind of a contemplative mood uh, which I'm not today I'm kind of in my yeah it's our birth story she'll probably I'll probably grab her uh, I wanted to be I have two sides to me I have a very deep meditative contemplative side that sees the interconnectedness of things and I have the other side, the Aries, I'm uh, Aries sun sign, I have that sign where I can drop everything and just be very joyous, very present, very, and I almost think that side is more spiritual because it's more childlike side, it's just not much to it, it's uncomplicated being present side. So, I'll grab you little lady, I'll grab you in a second, are you watching mama? So, let's get started, hopefully I'll be able to kind of retell the story properly and also I want to say it in a way where uh, I know that most people that watch this birthing stories videos are pregnant people that are about to give birth so I don't want to scare the crap out of anybody and uh, and make it sound like this very scary event but it is intense it is intense so I'll get started with I guess getting pregnant I'm gonna grab you mama I'm gonna grab you I'm gonna grab you because you think I'm talking to you, aren't you? You think I'm talking to you. And th this is our birth story. So here, she, here we are. So um, first, I got to uh, we'll just go a little, f a little far back uh, with getting pregnant. I first of all never uh, considered getting pregnant. I pretty much had made my mind when I was a teenager. I was thinking I'm not going to probably do have kids just as a choice. And um, kind of maintained that all through my 20s strongly and then not as strongly I maintained it in my early 30s thinking it's most likely not for me. I didn't want to say I will never do that because it's just I know better than to say never. Um, never say never. But uh, I kind of wasn't planning. Huh? I wasn't planning on uh, giving birth. So my partner's um, uh, father passed away and 
we had a few very challenging years uh, just uh, everything seemed very challenging with you know when someone very close to you passes it's usually you you have a lot of time for contemplation and just him and I had challenges and I realized at some point I had this strong understanding that maybe we should have a child or strong understanding that we should have a child and um, we spoke to I spoke with him and I kind of we kind of like said oh I said it possibly I, I think we should have a child and I meant we should since we're a little older we should probably start trying a year from now because I was in the midst of a lot of work and had a lot of things to prepare so it wasn't something I could fit in my schedule at the moment so we spoke about it and I in my head thought we are probably gonna talk about it a few more times and maybe start trying a year or nine months from now and by the time we get pregnant and stuff I have time anyways I probably got pregnant <laughs> in the next couple of days after we spoke about it just one of those things so we both felt like this was just kind of like beyond us an event because I think you have a chance of getting pregnant what um, 12 times a year so that's probably 36 days a year and I just got pregnant right after we spoke without necessarily trying maybe he was trying I have to ask him but I wasn't <laughs> trying to get pregnant immediately so um, so I had we and mostly him had this strong feeling that don't don't resist it don't worry about it just go with it because it's such a it's such an event she was like come on guys i've been waiting for you to make this decision and weren't you weren't you mama and <laughs> and this is her breathing story after all so pregnancy went pretty smoothly i had a lot of challenges on other fronts on my work front yeah I had a lot of challenges on my work front but I uh, the pregnancy itself went very smoothly I had zero issues there were things that bothered me uh, such as some um, gum bleeding um, I got restless legs for a few days but they were very treatable with yoga other than this blood pressure was perfect uh, blood sugar was perfect. It just my health and energy were through the roof. I loved it. I loved the feeling of being pregnant. Everything was great. But I, when I got pregnant, I knew nothing about pregnancy. And I'm a person that's really into natural stuff and doing everything just myself without the help of any practitioners, healers, doctors or anything. I haven't been to a doctor in many, many years. And the last time I went to a doctor was just for blood tests. Uh, not for anything uh, that I needed from the doctor, but just a blood test. So I'm just a person that believes in completely natural stuff. But when I got pregnant, I had no idea about home birthing. I have overheard about birthing with dolphins or in water, but it was just kind of in passing because I was I never had that intention to do any of it. So when I got pregnant, I just made a call. The first person that had good Yelp reviews, uh, gynecologist in the area so that I can go confirm that I'm pregnant because I found out that I'm pregnant when I was six weeks pregnant I just thought I'm having late late period huh? and and um are you getting tired of mama uh, so uh, when I went to the doctor she she was very easy going she kind of supported uh, whatever breath you want, uh, if you want a squat, if you want a natural, if you want all these things, just in a hospital, obviously, but everything was uh, how you want it. If you want candles, if you want essential oils, etc. So I figured I will follow the path of least resistance since she was the person I called and I'm already with her. I figured I'm just not gonna look for a midwife. I'll go with a hospital. I didn't have a birth plan because I kind of got the idea that this is beyond me. I got pregnant and it was beyond me. It was just a pregnancy felt for me like a whirlwind where I've hired a new one. 
bigger the new force takes you and you just don't matter because this force is about creating your life and you're just the, the vessel you're the portal in the vessel So, are getting bored? Uh, so I just didn't have a plan. Uh, I figured I'll just go with the path of least resistance. I've never been pregnant before. I never planned on it. So, uh, and um, the thing is, I didn't have a plan, birthing plan, because I knew I'm gonna get surprised. Uh, but I did have uh, desires of how I want my birth to go. Obviously, because I kind of prepared a little bit. So I'm, I, I gotta say I've never taken aspirin. I mean, never since I was a little kid. I haven't taken as since I was a teenager. Aspirin. I have never had surgeries. Never had anesthesia. Never had uh, have had any type of medication. I've never taken Advil for pain. Um, so I'm a pretty natural person. But I did understand that with birth, it may not go as planned. So I knew in the back of my head that I shouldn't have my heart set on one in this one particular way of birthing uh, I have my preference but I'm open to anything so that was my attitude uh, the two things I really didn't want was epidural because it just sounds scary to have uh, an anesthetic injected into your spine when you want to feel uh, your experiences and I wanted a fast birth oh and I wanted it to be early at 39 weeks of pregnancy <laughs> Okay, we'll be back without her. Let's play with her. And we continue without baby who was done with me holding her. She just wanted to sit in her bouncer. So, so uh, basically I kind of wanted a fast birthing experience and somewhat early. I didn't want to go into this oversized heavy stage of 40 weeks pregnant and I didn't want epidural. I wanted it natural. I figured I'll be in the hospital just because that's how things were kind of things normally naturally lined up and I didn't want to resist that. Um, um, my partner proposed a birthing center and a midwife and I was resistant. I just, I my plan was I'm going to do as much of the birthing at home once my contractions begin I'll push it as far as I can go and show up at the hospital at the last minute and give birth there. Uh, so, 39 weeks rolled, um, rolled in and I didn't have any signs of labor, still feeling great, energy, working out every day, every, all my stats were great, uh, the baby heartbeat and everything was great. But I started feeling pressure. Even my mom is like, oh, you're starting to be late. And it's just, I started feeling pressure about starting to be late. Um, we uh, started to try to induce with natural uh, options. Uh, I got uh, green papaya, which is known to induce contractions. I was drinking red raspberry leaf tea. I was... Um, doing a little more intense exercises and uh, birthing uh, movements and uh, finally I went to acupuncture which I think maybe started to move things around and that was at 40 weeks and a few days even the acupuncturist goes so how far along are you in your pregnancy and I go well I'm 40 weeks and two days I don't remember exactly if it was two days but let's say two three days she goes oh you're late and I'm like I'm, I'm not late I'm just <laughs> on time right uh, it just it's a normal first pregnancy does go usually to 41 weeks so i didn't want people to say the word late but they were saying it and my mom was acting as if she has not been late with me which she was so um so uh, basically around 40 weeks and four days i um did a workout which i will never post <laughs> because it was far too effective I did a workout that I did a workout and I ate a green papaya salad right after the workout and an hour and a half to two hours after that workout my uh, my mucus plug came out 
and uh, my um, contractions began. So this workout just put things, roll things forward. And when my contra my when my mucus plug came out that evening, I remember I was like, I'm okay with being pregnant two more days. I'm good with it. I'm enjoying it. It's still an enjoyable experience. I'm just gonna enjoy it. And when my mucus plug came out, even though I've been wanting to go into labor for the last two weeks, I was disappointed. I was like, this was a little too early. I just felt like I could have been pregnant two more days. Um, so my contractions started uh, that evening at around 9, but they were light. I still didn't sleep through the night because they weren't that light, but they weren't excruciating. I was never scared, I must say, of a birth pain, just because I think I have never thought about it. <laughs> and I was more scared about the change of life and independence and caring for someone and being responsible for a new person and it's just the change was what was more on my mind rather than um, the pain. I thought I have high pain tolerance and that's something I'll just get from. And um, the exercises that I did were very intense, kind of like lung jumps, plie jumps and such and it was interval training and it was really effective. It put me in labor. A little too early. Uh, I forgot to mention. Now, at 40 weeks, I went to my doctor and everybody was like, oh, you're back, uh, you're still pregnant, and you're so late, and just kind of comments like this. So, I was drinking red raspberry tea, and that morning I just had a few cups of red raspberry tea, which is supposed to thin your um, cervix and lining, and I went for a ultrasound they did the ultrasound and they said oh your amniotic fluid seems to be on the low end on the lower end of normal and if it goes any lower it's not good so that's the ultrasound te technician says this she gives the results to the doctor and we go to the doctor up until then she has been the most easygoing person she doesn't care about anything as long as my blood stats and everything is good she has been, my appointments were literally two minutes long, in and out. Hi, how are you? I'm great, bye. That was my entire pregnancy. Now she looks at my amniotic fluid and it was not in the uh, low, low range, but it was on the low end of normal. And she goes, oh, your amniotic fluid is low if, it, if like, I don't want stillbirth. And we have to start thinking about inducing if it's so low and I'll send you to the hospital for a better test because sometimes those machines are very ineffective and um, she threw the word stillbirth at me which stressed out my partners tremendously I I think I didn't I, I knew that those uh, ultrasounds are not very uh, a good way to predict how your uh, how much amniotic fluid you have and I had such a good feeling I was feeling so, I was feeling great, energetic, I felt the baby the entire pregnancy, I could tell what mood she's in, uh, as crazy as this sounds, but I, I, I just, I just could feel everything was great, her heartbeat was great, so from there she sent us to the hospital, I knew that I had not drank water that morning, I just a red raspberry tea, and um, we went to Whole Foods because we had two hours till the next appointment for amniotic fluid, ultrasound and I drank a whole bottle I think of sparkling water from Whole Foods I love that one in the glass the Italian sparkling water with red raspberry flavor and um, or strawberry lemon flavored and when we went there my amniotic fluid had gone significantly up to where it wasn't worrisome at all from just me drinking a bunch of water in two hours I knew that was it but they never mentioned anything about water so um, they said you have to come back, we have to monitor it because if it drops low we have to induce you and uh, deliver the baby. So when do you want to come back? Tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, the day after that and I said that you know three days later because I just knew that there is no issue there. They don't know how much amniotic fluid is from those machines and it's sound, it already showed good the second uh, test. So the next I drank water in between uh, those three days and we went back and it was totally perfect at that time, the amniotic fluid, so it was just like a bunch of stress for no reason. But in between that 
a, a latest test and the previous one where she said I don't want to have a stillbirth in my records that's what she said and I'm like that's the worst thing anybody can ever say to a mother who cares about you when you're talking to a person that is about to have a baby and you're like me 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 I, I don't want this on my record it was a really cold thing to say so I just went into a panicky mode that I don't want to give birth in the hospital and I need to get into a birthing center ASAP. So I wrote a few birthing centers because it was Saturday evening or something when we came home. The first one that my friend had given birth in, uh, they said they do not take anybody after 36 weeks of pregnancy, so absolutely out of the question. The other one took two days to respond and they said, oh, you can come down for an interview, we'll have to have you. But I was at this point 40 weeks and three days and I just didn't want to switch that quickly because I had to grab my records and it just seemed like unnecessary stress last minute. So, although I kind of panicked and tried to get myself into a birthing center, I didn't have quite that much time. I thought I could go in labor any second. I could go in labor in 15 minutes so I didn't want to just go through all this effort and have kind of in between situation when I'm in labor. So it was a stressful situation uh, unfortunately but that I already knew that it happens to a lot of women after you hit 40 weeks of pregnancy people start putting pressure on you and although my doctor originally didn't want to induce and she did not want to induce, she still kind of should have not said stillbirth to us uh, because of the amniotic fluid. Anyways, um, I um, um, basically uh, got back to the story. This, this was a little explanation of a little stressful situation leading up to labor. That's why I was trying to induce myself because I just didn't want that stress to pile up of me being late and everybody saying it, including mom. And I felt John, my partner, getting already kind of... It's it's a tense period. This last weeks and when you're late, it becomes so tense because you don't know the outcome, if everything will be all right. And also that's the last week I started feeling heavy finally and the pelvic floor was heavy and my bladder started feeling it and so forth it just started to become uncomfortable because I was so large and um, I just at this point wanted to uh, also give birth uh, but I put myself in labor when I was thinking I could do this for another two days and I'm enjoying it it's lovely it's a lovely experience I want to soak it in just being one with another being and one of your greatest loves in life is your child and you have this period when you're one um it's kind of like a divine feeling so i i was thinking i will cry during this birth story but i'm recording it on a day when i'm pretty cheery <laughs> i want it to be on a day when i'm more kind of contemplative and i can see the spiritual aspects of it more talk about those more anyway so birthing starts and contractions begin we uh, let the doctor know i don't know when we let her know we called in and we said oh in the morning we said we we were thinking my amniotic uh my water broke because the with the mucus plug water came out so we said uh mucus plug came out water broke and contractions started uh, that is my contraction started at 9 30 uh, in the evening on a Tuesday and we called Wednesday morning to tell them and they said that's fine you know come whenever you want to so um, we started walking that day a lot we just uh, went every hour for a walk and I think I was dancing a little bit and um, contractions were uh, absolutely bearable and I think they were around 10 minutes apart but not very consistent at all they started being like 20 minutes apart 10 minutes and so forth so I did a few poses that are in spinning babies that are kind of inverted poses and uh, from there my contractions became pretty painful we uh i laid down on the bed and i asked john because i've been asking him throughout the entire pregnancy to put his ear on my belly to hear her heartbeat and her heartbeat was always around here because she was uh, head down in the head down position and her back was to my uh, belly how she, it's the most the most beneficial position for birth uh, because the spine is uh, forward instead of pressing onto your back 
so where her back is that's where we could hear her uh, heartbeat the most and he put his ear there and he couldn't hear anything maybe she was dropped a little further down or she had turned around or something like that but he couldn't hear it and he just freaked out and he said we're going to the hospital and I resisted it I wanted to stay home and just get through the contractions but he, he was like no we're going we went to the hospital and they checked me and they said my amniotic uh, my water hasn't broken, I do have contractions, and I'm not dilated. I won't say I wasn't dilated at all. Uh, and, or maybe one centimeter at the most. I wasn't dilated at all uh, prior to this, uh, in the previous weeks. I don't think I checked, but I'm pretty sure. I don't... I... Yeah, I checked when my contractions began and I wasn't dilated. It, some parts of my story will be fuzzy. I, in general, don't have the best memory, let alone um, when you're in labor, <laughs> things become extremely f fuzzy. Anyways, so they said we can take you in, which I'm surprised because they were willing to, to take me in immediately and I said, or you can go home. And I said, no, I'll go home. So we uh, left the hospital, we went home, I did the spinning baby, uh, so, uh, poses and my contractions went from very painful to, to excruciating in the mi matter of 15 minutes. It just was a turnaround to where I, I was in bed and I figured I need to get myself in the bathtub. So I go into the bathtub and my contractions, I think I was in bed with the contractions for, but they were uh, just excruciating uh, meaning I couldn't move through them I couldn't breathe through them I couldn't do anything to them I couldn't talk I could they were excruciating and I was naively prepared for uh, bearable contractions painful but bearable so I got in the bathtub and John tried to keep me hydrated and pop in every 30 minutes with coconut water or water and asked me how I'm doing, I couldn't talk and I didn't have time in between contractions how I was prepared that I would have bad contra painful contractions and rest in between, it was like, very painful and unbearably painful it was very painful, um, I would say it was unbearably painful picking into I'm gonna die painful and so forth, I don't wanna I wanna be truthful with you but I don't wanna scare you so I don't know where the media the healthy medium is but I'll try to <laughs> I'll try to be as truthful as I can be because you, I have the most beautiful memories of my birth so even though it was painful when I think back to these times I'm just oh my heart is I feel like I was the pain was breaking my heart open uh, I'm starting to tear up which is a good thing I'm starting to get into the story uh, so um, the bathtub was a terrible experience, it was just, I, I couldn't talk and I didn't want him in, in the room, I didn't want anybody around, I had made sure that uh, his mom was gonna come in uh, for the birth and I made sure that she comes in after, I just knew that I wanted to be alone for the birth, that's why I didn't get a midwife, although now I regret, I don't regret anything, but if I'm to do it again, I would definitely get a midwife because she would do some counter pressure on my back and so forth so um, I, I was just able to do this just to uh, to have him leave the room because I didn't want anybody around and I was just sitting and thinking to myself this is I can't get through this I can't get through this so I couldn't even adjust the temperature of my water when he would come in he would adjust the temperature so it doesn't get cold and I think I was in the bathtub for over two hours and at this point I was like I need to get out of here and get myself to the hospital and get an epidural which was funny because that was one of my I was prepared that I might get an epidural in a c-section if I must because I didn't want to have attachment I when I listen to people's birth stories the worst ones that I heard were people that were very attached to their birth plan and I had a birth plan but was not attached to it so my birth plan was no epidural, no induction, no pitocin an opitocin after birth, no uh, birthing in a squatted position if possible, um, using essential oils, keeping my placenta and so forth. It was, I had a long list of things uh, that when we showed up we gave them my birth plan and um, 
just no injections, no medication, and so forth. And uh, <laughs> and I I couldn't get out of the bathtub, but I was I was at this point I was like I can't can cannot get out of this bathtub. It's that's how much pain I'm in, and I. I need to get out of this bathtub and go to the hospital, I need to get epidural, I just cannot deal with this, I cannot speak, I can't even tell him what I want. And so finally I got out, it took me a while to get dressed because the pain was beyond excruciating. I found online someone describing the pain that fit exactly my description but I'll spare you that description. And I had, unfortunately, back labor, although she was in the proper position, who knows, my uh, pelvis uh, maybe is not as wide, I don't know, it was just, I had excruciating back pain, although she was not back to back with me, she was head down, spine, somewhere here. And... Um, so we made it to the hospital, it was excruciating, I think my teeth were... Um, uh, what's that sound that they uh, make? I was shaking and pretty much at this point screaming and so forth. It was pretty bad. We made it to the hospital and it was so emotional because we had candles and kind of lights and booties in the in the little vitrine. It was this kind of like mystical night in which you, you don't know how things will work out. It was already the Wednesday night. Uh, my contractions began on Tuesday night. So it was uh, 24 hours later. And things escalated very quickly. From bearable pain to absolutely just insane pain. So I, I was, I was uh, uh, doubtful about calling it insane pain because I don't want to scare women because I know most women are scared of uh, uh, birth pain and I think maybe to a degree it is good to be prepared because I was not prepared that I, I thought I have high pain tolerance and I'll just take it um, because I exercise so much and I thought that but on the other hand when you are very aware of your body you feel everything and I do feel everything in my body so that makes me even feel pain even more, I think. And I felt everything with such excruciating detail. I forgot to mention that when I first got pregnant, I was so aware of something just strange. I kept saying there's something in my stomach that's not right. It was never there before. I didn't consider pregnancy, uh, but I just was like, is it hernia? Is it, um, what did I think? Cancer, I it was like, it's just something there that was never there before. It was just like, no, right? I was going to go to a doctor for a hernia or something. Because it was just feeling so strange, oddly different. But I didn't consider pregnancy. And I'm used to feeling good. Because you guys know I'm about health and feeling great. And I'm not about looking good. I'm about feeling good. And that's what eating good and exercising gives me, this lightness of my body. So when the pain started, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I just couldn't wait to get to the hospital and get the epidural. And I had told him to back me, hold me off of the epidural if I wanna. But at this point, he wasn't gonna uh, keep me off. There wasn't. I wasn't even in a. I wasn't even in a situation where I was gonna argue with anybody. It was just I couldn't talk. Uh, so we got to the hospital. They did have to check my amniotic fluid. It, it, it still hadn't broken. I was only. I want to say I was only one or two centimeters dilated and that was already, I think, four hours of excruciating pain, maybe. No, it was five and a half hours because by the time we got to the hospital and before the bathtub and all that, I think it, it must have been at least five or six hours of excruciating pain. I had it. I've had enough. And I was one centimeter dilated. So... Um, they uh, they took me in. It took a while uh, up until we get to the room. Then uh, the um, anesthesiologist came, and that was my biggest fear was epidural, uh, honestly, because it's something going into your spine and it's something that numbs you. So it was a massive fear of mine. If I had any fear about birth, it was epidural, because I just don't want anything that can potentially decrease my how I feel my body. And I just don't want anything in my spine. But anyways, at this point, I did not care. And 
Um, uh, the anesthesiologist was awesome. Uh, he was uh, an Armenian of Turkish nation of Turkish uh, nationality, and he had all these stories and things to say, and just very cheery, lovely. And Turkey is a border country to Bulgaria, so we had a lot of things to talk about. And um, he uh, gave me the epidural and kicked in immediately. By the time he was still saying the same story, I was already in a normal mode. Meaning, before that, it was just bad. And um, after I got the epidural, I just kind of felt a little better, or a lot better, because the pain went completely away. And um, in retrospect, I think um, I wouldn't, I, if I was with this level of pain in a birthing center, I think I would still have ended up in the hospital with epidural because uh, without going into insane detail, I, there wasn't the type of pain I was going to deal with more than, more than this amount of six hours of time. It was just enough for me. And um, after I got the epidural, uh, I think my, I started progressing, but it wasn't fast progressing, my, uh, uh, my dilation. I had to be obviously on the monitor. The baby stayed with amazing heartbeat. They kept commenting how happy she is. Uh, just her uh, stats were great and my stats were great. Heartbeat, uh, heart, uh, blood pressure, everything was great. It was just the pain. And uh, the whole time there was no stress about anything going wrong. Uh, I kind of thought that that was the evening, I kind of thought by morning and that's what the nurses thought I'm gonna be giving birth that morning because I think I was already at 8 centimeters dilated by morning. Uh, but then the doctor wasn't around, uh, there was just all this busyness and stuff so I, um, they said let's try pushing at around I think the afternoon which is Thursday afternoon, many hours later basically. Uh, so uh, we, uh, when we, this is funny here, when uh, the nurse said let's um, try to push, I was just not ready to push and couldn't feel anything from the epidural. I had gotten a few top offs of the epidural because it had worn off completely and the uh, new anesthesiologist that came into the next shift was in a C-section for two hours so I went into this crazy screaming for two, two and a half more hours uh, of pain that you can't breathe through like it, uh, um, a person that can breathe it was it just excruciating back labor and um, maybe I was just naively prepared for no pain I don't know and um, because my focus was on other things, really on just how am I going to deal with a different identity I have uh, than labor pains. Labor pains were never part of my fears in life. And um, uh, so, so yeah, there was another segment of again full on 100% pain. Then the anesthesiologist came and he gave me again epidural. So I had a few top offs because it was such a long process. And I, I think had I had a doctor there the whole time, I would have given birth a little earlier. But we started, did a test push, I think, at, in the afternoon at 2. And I had, that was one of my uh, kind of, I, I didn't want to push that much because I just knew that when you push real hard, you're going to get hemorrhoids and you're going to tear your shit up, like everything will tear up. So I just thought to myself, okay, I've heard the hypnobirthing theory, so I thought maybe I can breathe her out. And I was like, anything? And they're like, no, nothing. <laughs> so I was just not ready to push because I just was not ready to tear my whole stuff up, which is what basically you're supposed to do. And I did a few more of those. And I, and they said, well, you're not ready. I was nine centimeters dilated. They said, well, you're not ready. I was fully effaced early, I think, or 90% effaced. I was just not dilated, but I was effaced. And all the other things, I think the thinning and the cervix, everything was fine. Uh, all the health stats were fine. Everything was progressing properly, just slowly. And I know that epidural can, can slow your progression. Had I not gotten the epidural, maybe I would have given birth quickly. Uh, another theory I have is 
your baby has chosen its time of birth because of astrology reasons at the time of conception even before that so another theory i have is maybe i put myself in labor a little too early with that workout which was so intense it was interval training i had a lot of energy so i just had a longer labor because my birth moment was set in time that's just some feeling i have anyway some uh they said let's push a little later. John left uh, to go feed Sophie, to come home and feed Sophie. And an, um, meanwhile another nurse had to come in and the whole energy of the room shifted. The whole time it was just me and John in the room. It was pretty pleasant, low lighting, no one was pushing anything on me. There wasn't any, no one wanted to induce me or to do any extra procedures. It was pretty it was pretty mellow, it was pretty calm, um, we were just kind of laying, he, he wasn't able to sleep because the couch was uncomfortable, but we weren't talking, we were just laying and kind of meditating. It was exhaustingly long, and because this is already 40 hours later, and uh, since the first contraction has began. So a nurse comes in, a new nurse comes in, because this is the third round of nurses, because I think they change every 12 hours, and she had the most amazing energy. Her name was Betty, and we both knew, I, as soon as I saw her, she was kind of in her fifth, 60s maybe, and as soon as I saw her, I was like, yes, yes because she was so cute and so sweet and I just I just felt like okay things are gonna happen now because I just loved her the other ones were lovely but it was just they weren't the one and um, so um, she, I, after John left for, uh, to, uh, to feed Sophie she came in and uh, she uh, she said oh you're already completely uh, dilated let's uh, wait for John and start pushing and I'm like wait for John no I want to put this baby right now I don't want to wait for anybody <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing now and she's like no the doctor is not ready yet she's at the dinner whatever I like we have to wait so that's the problem when you don't have a midwife and I think that's that's something that if you're looking into either hospital or a midwife go with a midwife I think although I have never experienced it obviously but you want to push when you want to push if you're ready and at this point I never got the urge to push um, but I just wanted at this point to give birth because I'll tell you why um, the first time we tried to uh, push the the, uh, the desk pushing let's see baby is probably hungry so so we're back with this little princess. <laughs> so we're back with this little monkey. And I tried to tell her how difficult it was to produce her. It was a very difficult process, mom. <laughs> and um, so some there is gaps in my story. I forgot to mention that my amniotic, my water broke that Thursday, um, late afternoon because I had thought originally that my water broke in the beginning of my labor but that was not that was just the mucus plug was not the water breaking because otherwise it would have been dangerous for her to uh, for infections and stuff so my water finally broke Thursday afternoon and um, when it broke they said there is a little bit of myconium in it which stressed me out because I know that can stress the baby out and it can lead into c-section so I got scared, I was like, my cognac in it, oh, like, what are we going to do? And they're like, oh, don't worry, it's so common, it's very little, it's minimal quantity. So I still kind of started to feel urgency to push. Up until then, I just didn't have the urgency to push. I, I felt like I have time, there's no worry, etc. And she wants to be held like this, by the way. She does not like certain ways of being held by me. Her dad can hold her like this, I have to hold her different ways. Are you talking? Let's say something to the camera. What you say, Mama? So, um, uh, so, um, so they said nothing to worry about. I, the original test pushing, I still had epidural 
feeling I it was still numb from the epidural so I just didn't understand how to push when I'm not feeling anything it's just I, I, I thought to myself I cannot do this on epidural so my epidural started wearing off and I know that it, when it starts to wear off it goes from a little bit of wearing off to in the next 15 minutes completely gone any uh, anesthetic effect and they asked me do you want uh, another epidural and I said no because I want to start pushing and I want to feel it so it started to wear off pretty fast and by the time I started to push I could feel absolutely everything which was not quite as bad as the contractions the pushing part was just really as long as you're pushing during contractions it was relieving and I began pushing the doctor called um, the, um, the nurse while I was pushing and the nurse talked to her and said do you want me to tell her and the doctor must have said no so she said okay so I was like what is she not telling me um, because originally when I started to push not it wasn't much happening she would say well she's at plus two station she comes down a little bit not even to plus one and back up once I'm done pushing so nothing was happening it felt very difficult it felt like I'm trying to squeeze a human out of my birth canal basically that's what it felt like it just was tight probably from all those kegels but there was a lot of tight feeling of how how is she gonna even descend down because she wasn't were you not descending down huh we're just going back up she'll come back down and back up and back down and up and down and up so I think they said well if this does not progress any further we can try the kiwi so I was like okay what is the kiwi oh it's that vacuum thing otherwise we haven't done any interventions any inductions just anything just the, just pain relief but that's about it everything else looked good all the blood were everything was just perfect she looked like a very happy baby they kept making um, jokes about how happy she is through this entire long process the pain was terrible I Im, Im, remember at some point telling the nurse I how do you bear this pain I want to pass out and she's like oh honey you don't want to pass out and I'm like no trust me I do <laughs> so <laughs> it was pretty it was kind of funny kind of crazy and um Let's put you down, huh? You don't want to be held anymore. So let's try to finish this story because I, she might need mama. And um, uh, uh, so basically we started pushing. Uh, sorry, I'm a little discombobulated. Maybe not the right day to shoot this video because I'm forgetting to say all the emotional and spiritual aspects of it and I'm missing out details. But uh, we... Uh, uh, when I first started pushing, nothing was happening much. So I started panicking within myself. I don't think John knew anything about it, but I thought to myself, this is gonna go into a C-section, but I just can't see how I'm gonna push this baby out. And I was pushing for quite a while, and when I heard that the Kiwi, if they can only do it two or three times, and if that doesn't work, C-section, you can't push anymore after Kiwi, I went into psycho mode. I was like, forget about hemorrhoids, forget about tearing my stuff up. I'm just gonna go into psycho mode. This is uh, 48 hours almost uh, later with no food. I was drinking a little bit of coconut water, but I wasn't even doing that. And it just the adrenaline kicked in and I started pushing like a maniac to where things started to happen. With each contraction, as soon as I feel it coming, I'll do one push, second, third, and I'll be like, to the nurse I'm going for a fourth one and the doctor came in because it was getting closer and they were laughing they were like man you're <laughs> you're in psycho mode and I, I was just every contraction four pushes but with all my might it was hard it wasn't I heard all these people's stories how they did two three pushes the baby was out or just like 15 minutes of pushing the baby None of that for me. It was two and a half hours of, uh, and I had to get serious about pushing because I realized I'm going to have to, uh, it will go into a C-section if I don't get this done. Are you just talking? And, uh, and when she came out, finally she came out, um, the 
NICU was there because of the uh, myconium uh, in the amniotic fluid. Uh, they put her on me. It was so funny because she, by, uh, by the way, all the pushing was no epidural. I could feel absolutely everything and thank God because I don't think I could have done any pushing on epidural. I, I walked off of uh, pushing because everything was, I had no anesthesia in me. So it was, few, uh, it was, but the pushing part was such a relief of the contraction. So it was much more doable than just contractions with no pushing. So um, when she came out, it was so funny because she came out and she just looked me straight in the eye and she was surprised like, it's been you, it's you. Something like this, that's the feeling I had. It was amazing. And she was uh, very mellow, easy going from uh, there. They checked her after she was on my uh, chest for, uh, for a while. She uh, latched on and everything. They checked her uh, for five minutes, the NICU in my room. She never left my room. And they said she's perfectly fine, she's happy. She, her heartbeat never dropped. My blood pressure, her, everything was perfect the entire time except for it was a slow labor and it was painful. But the thing is, I realize in retrospect now, when you carry for a little longer, it is beneficial to the baby because their digestive system develops and their respiratory system develops, so they have less respiratory issues and no belly pain and ache, which is a nightmare because my brother had. Um, uh, belly pain so if you are one of those women that are caring for over 40 weeks just understand that your baby has perfect timing and she'll come when she's ready and when her lungs are ready and when she comes at that time it's better for you and for your baby because she's going to be more developed very few babies I, as far as I know only 2% of babies that are con after 40 weeks are actually born overdue meaning with signs of being overdue staying too long but for most of us it's just their perfect timing and they probably since the time of conception is not always known they may not be even 40 weeks who knows um i uh, walked as as i said i walked off of uh, uh they they were like, do you want to go, uh, someone assist you to go pee? And I'm like, no, they were joking, she can run because I was just feeling good after, obviously, from the adrenaline, feeling good after birth. And um, I had, I think, one or two stitches, um, minimal tearing. Um, I'm sure it was going to be far more had I gotten my wish for fast labor. Uh, so she was born seven pounds 11 ounces 20 inches long she and I think she's pretty tall now uh, and uh, yeah and uh, oh yeah they said she's perfectly happy the NICU they gave her back after five minutes or less uh, after they check her we checked out of I couldn't stay, stay, stay in the hospital for long because they kept coming in for everything for blood pressure for bleeding for this for that i didn't get pitocin or anything after so basically the only thing i got was epidural but everything else was completely no interventions no um, no other help other than the uh, so i didn't get everything natural but at least i i didn't get any type of um pitocin after for uh, bleeding everything was fine everything went fine um, and um, I even after birth I was like shouldn't have they induced me this was like ridiculously long but I guess a lot of labors are this long I was just hoping for a fast labor and that's another thing don't hope for fast labor because if it's too fast the recovery is uh, difficult because it can lead to more prolapse or to more tearing you want kind of some level of pain and slow progression if you get something that you didn't want you still have to find gratitude for it and feel good about it um they were uh, laughing and joking with me after i gave birth that i just went in psycho mode and she the nurse was saying you did amazing because most women give up at this point after this long they go into c-section because there is just no energy left in the person and i'm like thank god my interval training kicked in someplace <laughs> finally because i just uh had excessive amount of energy which um, which is good after no food um, I don't know what else to say uh, I will um, for my three month postpartum recovery go on my second channel I'll link it below 
um, because I'm gonna start doing more personal things there and baby stuff personal things there and more yoga classes on this channel so that I can separate kind of family personal life stuff from this channel this channel originally was a yoga class channel and I'll keep it like that even with a few different videos I'll still keep it very very educational and uh, follow me on Instagram because that's where I do the most uh, most personal honest sharing not every post is serious there but I do serious posts on there <laughs> she's so funny she's just talking to me there and kicking kicking and um and talking to her hands I'll zoom in in a second if she's still in the same mood and um uh, and that's that's it I think I got my perfect birth not the birth I wanted but the one that I needed because recovery was good and I have such amazing memories from it it was such a heart opening experience uh, even though I got epidural I think I got about 10 hours of insane pain so I think I paid my dues I felt that I'm just starting to think that I never believed that story in the Bible that were punished to feel pain and I was like oh my god I'm so totally into pharmaceuticals and into that story about us being punished because this felt like pain karmic debt that pain was just ridiculous but you know it goes away and you look back on it and it feels amazing so when you're in it just remind yourself that it will be over with and just stay relaxed as far as no fear and uh, trust that that's what's how it's meant to be you're getting your perfect birth not the one that your mind wanted but the one that your heart needed uh, let me know if you have any questions comments I wish I was in a more like contemplative mood so that I can say the other aspects of the birth but maybe in a future video this was just kind of like I feel kind of light today but that's okay are you talking to yourself she found out how to suck her lips that might be because she's teething so sometimes her mouth disappears in her lips disappearing in her mouth are you kicking your legs are you being a cheeky monkey are you being a cheeky monkey let's see you she's very aware of the camera very that's the new generation babies I'd like to torture her with kisses. Mm. Mm. This is a three months after this intense labor. I would say it was extremely intense. It was extremely spiritual. My postpartum recovery was very interesting. It was the most spiritual time of my life, most profound, most beautiful time. I wouldn't change it for anything. It was just gorgeous and beautiful. I feel like I grew as a person. I feel like my heart got cracked open. And I can laugh with such intensity now. So much more my partner, my mother, my father, my brother and everybody else. I feel that it was such an amazing experience. Yeah, you have all these stories from Mama. You're telling me what it was before you came to work, huh? What was, what was there? What was in there? Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, you guys. Thanks for being with us. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you.